What's going on guys? This is ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at an all new case from Retro Flag and this thing is beautiful. It's called the Mega Pie. It's available right now on Amazon for $24.99. They also sell a matching USB controller for $15 and it actually feels really good. So you might recognize the name Retro Flag from the original NES Pi case. This kind of started the mini console case craze for the Raspberry Pi. Then they released the two Super Pi cases. And now they have the Mega Pi, which in my opinion is the best one so far. There's no going back from here. This is an amazing case. They have seriously knocked it out of the park once again. And for $24.99, it's well worth the money if you want that Sega Genesis slash Mega Drive look. Now this is obviously modeled after the Mega Drive. I do not know if they're going to be releasing a Genesis version. I grew up in the States with the Genesis, but I've always loved the look and the color scheme of the Mega Drive. So this is compatible with the Raspberry Pi 2, the Raspberry Pi 3, the Raspberry Pi 3B+, and I even tested the Asus Tinkerboard. Fits in here fine. It does have a safe shutdown and a safe reset switch as long as you install the script and it's the same exact script from the Nest Pi and the Super Pi so if you already have something set up you just need to plug your SD card in here and the buttons will work. Speaking of buttons, if we move the volume rocker down to the eject position it will pop the lid on the case so you can throw some SD cards in there or USB drives just to keep them close. There's also another hinged compartment on the side here so we can easily access the SD card. It's also spring loaded, there's no button to eject it, but as soon as you pop it up, it will stay up for you. Kind of a little back breakaway here where we can access two USB ports and our ethernet. When this was first announced, I know a lot of people were upset about the ethernet being plunged into here, but even if this thing was filled with gold, they'd want it filled with silver. So you're not gonna make everybody happy, but they did add this little notch here. So if you want ethernet in and the case still look nice, very easy to do. Personally, ever since the Raspberry Pi 3B Plus came out with AC Wi-Fi, I haven't really plugged in Ethernet to any of my Raspberry Pis. So in the box, we get the case, instructions, screwdriver, and all the screws we're going to need to put this thing together. It does not come with heat sinks or a fan, but there is a spot for a fan on this thing if you want to add one. You can download the safe shutdown script right here. Same one as the Nest Pi, same one as the Super Pi cases. I also went ahead and picked up one of their controllers. Now this thing actually feels pretty good. It's $14.99. It's a little springy compared to my original Genesis controllers, but those have been used for years, so they could have felt like that when they were brand new. Overall, it's one of the best USB style six button Genesis controllers that I've ever messed around with. They also added two extra buttons. We got an L button and a select button. I know you see the R there, but that would be substituted for the mode button on the original six button controller, so I'm not counting it. I know they want to make that money, but I wish they would have put this out for $10 instead of $15. But we do have other options. So 8BitO has the do-it-yourself kits. I have one here. I did a video on it. You just replace the internals of a six button controller with their Bluetooth kit, and it works really well with the Raspberry Pi. The retro flag version is a bit smaller, but you can get used to it. Now, my favorite option is the upcoming N30 Pro 2 Bluetooth gamepad from 8BitO. I've been testing this out for the last couple weeks. I absolutely love this controller. They come in a few different styles, but since we're kind of on a Sega kick here, I figured I'd pair up the M version. Now, hopefully these will be available by the end of the month. I do have a review coming out on all of them very shortly. Like I mentioned, I've been testing them out for the last couple weeks, and I love these controllers. Assembling the case is very straightforward. They offer full color instructions. If you want to add a fan, they do have a mounting spot for the fan. And I wanted to test out a couple different heat sinks because I get this question a lot. Will it fit? Will it not? So right now, I just tested the dual fan heat sink. Unfortunately, you will have to modify the case for it to fit. But if you're willing to cut the fan holder fingers out of the case, this will fit inside of here. But I just decided to go with a simple fan and a copper heat sink. Fits right in here. Everything lines up perfectly. This probably will still throttle, but if we're just doing Genesis games and Game Gear, the Pi is still going to handle it when the CPU is underclocked. Before you assemble your case, decide if you're going to use that safe shutdown script or not. You need to enable it or turn it off here. Two screws hold the Pi down inside, and then we're going to put the six screws in the bottom, throw our micro SD card in here, and go ahead and boot it up. So everything lines up perfectly. You have access to your micro USB, your full-size HDMI, and your 3.5mm audio out. 
like you saw in the beginning, if you want Ethernet, you can take that little tab out, leave it plugged in, it'll still look really good. I just can't get over how good this thing looks. Now, I was really impressed with their Super Pi cases, but as soon as I slid this out of the box, my jaw hit the floor. And I want to get this out of the way before we go any further. I should have said this at the very beginning. I am not paid, compensated, or endorsed by Retro Flag whatsoever. If this case was horrible, if it was the worst case in the world, I would tell you guys do not buy it. But I can't say that here. This is an amazing little case. Before we get out of here, I do want to test the reset and shutdown button. I've already installed the script on it. I'm going to fast forward this boot and make it a little quicker. Need to go ahead and set up the USB controller. So I have it in X input mode and it registered as a Microsoft Xbox controller. You can switch it to D input mode. If you buy one, the instructions are in the box somewhere. It'll probably register as a PlayStation controller if D input is enabled. And we did have enough buttons to set up everything except for the analog sticks. I just kind of threw a little Sega image together. I forgot to throw Game Gear on here, but I can do it later on. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and test out this reset and shutdown button here. I'm just going to press the reset button. It's going to run the script. And I love this little eject button here. You can just throw some extra SD cards in there or those little slim ultra fit sand disk USB drives fit in here perfectly. Now I'm going to test the shutdown switch. It shouldn't kill the power completely. I just flipped it. It's going to run a script, shut the unit down for us. Very nice. Works fine. I knew it would. And I almost forgot to mention that yes, there is a power LED. So that's pretty much it for this video, guys. I really appreciate you watching. Just wanted to show you guys this new case. I think it looks awesome. But remember, it's not going to add any performance to your Raspberry Pi. You're still not going to be able to run N64 even though you bought a $24 case. But it sure does look good and it also adds a safe reset and a safe power switch. If you're interested in picking one of these up or anything I showed in this video, I'm going to leave Amazon links in the description. If you already have a case that you're happy with, just keep the case you got. Really appreciate you guys watching. If you could, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and like always, thanks for watching.